Hello, everyone, and welcome. Welcome back to the Village Law SEQFC preview show. My name's Darren. I've moved into a new place. We're getting everything sorted. We've got internet again. So we're all good to go. Thank you for uh, uh, your patience during the past few weeks while we get everything sorted. And I hope you've checked out some of the other shows that are going on at the moment as well. So like that Raw Review, they, those guys do fantastic work. And the FQ have got a show going as well. So hopefully they've tidied you over in the past few weeks. Now, tonight, we've got Liam Parslow with us. G'day, Liam. Hello, everybody. We go mate, again. Went down to Sydney last week for the Socceroos. Uh, yes, mate. Uh, battled the weather there and the, and the rain and the behind goal there with the with Australian Active uh, Support Group. And uh, it, it was good fun despite the result. It's, it's always good being with the football family. You know that. Arnold Dowd or better players? Say that again, sorry? Arnold out or better players? Uh, Arnold out, I think. Uh, I think I really do think we do have the players to get where we need to be. I just think tactically he's just, he's just, he, he's done. Um, I think the players as well, uh, they say that, uh, that, that they still got the dressing room as, as they say, but I'm not, I, I don't know about that. Um, it's, yeah, I think we do have the players. I just think tactically we're just not, not good. Not good at all. All right. Interesting. All right, we've got two guests with us tonight so far. We might have one more joining us. We've got DK from the Sunny Coast Fire. G'day, mate. How are you? Hey, good, Daz. Good. Nice to be back. It in a while. sure is. <laughs> and uh, you're back from surgery, you're tell telling me before. Yeah, yeah, they couldn't do much with it. But, yeah, they've, uh, they've uh, fixed the inside of my nose, so. I said Brad Pitt, but you know they just said there's nothing they could do for me. So, but yeah, it's good. It's nice to be able to breathe again. Um, yeah, so very happy, very happy that it's all come out quite good. So, mm. good stuff. So uh, you haven't been looking after the fire for the past two weeks, have you? No, no, I've left it with my assistants and stuff, and they've done a good job. And you know, obviously, got to see kind of a lot of the stuff that I have to do behind the scenes and. Um, yeah, yeah, a lot of work that goes in and, and they've had to do over time with the trainings and things like that. So, yeah, appreciative that I've got them and we're able to keep ticking on and, um, you know, it's good to be back. Nice to be back on the grass yesterday. So it was enjoyable. Right. Good stuff. Now, Braden Hoffman, he is the goalkeeper coach at Lions FC. That's your job this year, isn't it, mate? Yeah, that's my job this year. So thanks for having me. Long time listener, first time caller. Oh, I have interviewed you in the past, though. So oh, you uh, have, yeah. your first time on this show. So good to have you on board, mate. Lions, we're going to obviously talk about the MPL women's tonight. Lions going to be the overwhelming favourites. And I guess your job, mate, is to try and convince me that uh, that there's another team out there that are going to run you close. Mate, there is. There's uh, eight other teams, I think, that are, you know, vying for our, our spot. Obviously, winning last year, we're going to be the hunted. But I think... Um, it's a smaller league this year and more players, uh, quality players within that. So it's going to be tough. It's not going to be easy. Um, we accept that. So we just got to train hard. The best playing the best more consistently. Yeah, that's what we've been wanting for a long time. So, yeah. 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 Good stuff. And the other guest who I think has just joined us, we've got Kirk Brebner from, he's the president of Surface Paradise Apollo. G'day, Kirk. How are you, Darren? Good to see you, mate. Yeah. Good. Been a while. Good. good to have you with us, mate. You look, geez, you're looking good. Am I actually? I just woke up off the lounge, mate. To be fair, <laughs> 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 quickly shirt on, do the hair quickly, and away I go. Yeah. Hmm. All this time you're spending on top of tall buildings. Yes, mate. Yeah. Well, the last couple of days I I've torn my hamstring on Tuesday night playing five a side. So I oh, know. Lounge with a bag of ice or and a bag of peas. So yeah. Right. So if anyone knows Kirk, go and check out his, his Facebook and Instagram pages because he's doing all these videos of, of being on top of what, – what's the building? So I do the Meriton up at uh, – in on Surface Paradise Boulevard there, the ocean it's called. Uh, yep. So pretty much that's why I, I, I do all the high-rise towers. I'm a surveyor, so make sure they go up straight. Tower of our surfers, they call it. Bit of a lean sometimes when I'm on them, but no, great. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Some great views. Yeah, mate. The views are stunning. Absolutely stunning. Yeah. Can't complain. Brilliant. And uh, enjoying life in FQPL too. 
Uh, it's, it's interesting, actually. It's something new to us. I mean, just playing games out of the Gold Coast is always handy, and it's, it's, it's all new. It's, uh, we've done that, like, in the Cup in the past, but now playing all these teams all over uh, Brisbane, which, let's be fair, most of them are North Brisbane, so it's a bit <laughs> of a drive for us. But, uh, yeah, it's exciting times, uh, something new again, like I said, and, yeah, it's just hopefully we can uh, move onwards and upwards into the QPL1. That's the plan. Good stuff. All right. Now, let's start with the with the MPL men's. We're uh, three rounds into the competition now, guys. I'm going to throw this to everyone. Gold Coast Knights. Actually, Kirk, I'll start this with you. Gold Coast Knights, top of the ladder. Did you see that coming? In MPL, uh, to be honest, Knights were a bit of – I mean, they're a strong club and that, but with Scott coming in this year, uh, a new coach, bring some new plays and get rid of some old, it might have been a bit of uh, unsure to see where they would sit, but – you know, they're a quality outfit, as you can see now. So I wouldn't say much a surprise, but maybe a lot of other clubs didn't think they would be up there so early um, in the, in up top. But no, it's it's, it's an interesting, that, that that whole league. So is it going to be the top four? Obviously, Penn Power, which we know very well of, of uh, on Tuesday night, should uh, be fighting back up there after a couple of bad games at the start. So no, but Knights, they look strong and uh, I think they'll be top four guaranteed. You had a cup game against uh, Penny Power last night. Tell us about that. I'd rather not, but <laughs> that was on Tuesday <laughs> night. No, it's uh, – listen, let's be, let's be fair. It's, it was chalk and cheese in terms of on the paddock. Uh, but, I mean, as a club, they're the benchmark um, club on, on, on in Queensland for the last couple of years. So it just shows where we have to get if we want to compete at that level. I mean, being a couple of divisions below – um, obviously, you know, it's something that we uh, strive to, but, you know, it wasn't a good day on the paddock. You know, we got done 9-0. I think it was 6-0 at half time. you know. A few changes on the paddock, a few pl- uh, personnel w- weren't there available. Penn Power, well coached, you know. They knew what they were coming down to. They pretty much um, picked us apart. Um, we will dust off our boots and uh, we'll go again against Sanford on the weekends. You know, we won't play a better side than that all year. We can concentrate on what our goal is now, and that's to get up to QPL one. But you know, it was uh, it was good to watch a good team like Penn Power play, you know. And I, I think we played them into our form. So, <laughs> warning for the rest of the game. <laughs> yeah. DK, I'll throw to you now. Are you surprised to see Sunny Coast Wanderers undefeated so far? No, not at all. Um, I think I think with I'm them, and I think. Ev- no, I think I think with them, I think like everything, their mentality and the way that they are is everyone's against them, and that's how they like to play, and that's how they I think they play with it. They're they're never an easy team to beat. I mean, you probably saw the game with Penn Power. They played them. I mean, if you looked at the pitch, <laughs> that's going to level any team out when you have to play on there, and it suits them. And they're a tough team to beat. I think people keep forgetting that you know. They are they are a very very strong, aggressive, hard working team, and they're not a team that people like to play. And you know it, they'll get points. Whether they can keep it up consistently is going to be, you know, see if they can. Do they have the depth? You know, who knows? But I think everyone from last year should understand that that's that's what they're capable of. They can cause problems, and if you don't come into the game prepared and and know what you're expecting, then it's going to be tough. And they'll be they'll be They'll be expecting themselves to try and stay up in that area, you know, and I think it, it doesn't surprise me just because of how the league is sometimes, especially at the start, you know, they're firing. So they'll, they'll, they'll just back against the wall and that's how they like it. Yeah. Liam, uh, the big surprise is the cup set last night with Capalaba going down to Redcliffe Dolphins. Congratulations yeah. to the Peninsula Club. Um but Capalaba, Neil Dupois and Brisbane City yet to register a point as well. Yeah, look, uh, I think we seem to forget too that, you know, we're only three rounds in and uh, we were pretty well, uh, all, all the league, all the leagues were basically um, uh, with with the weather and, and that we've had leading up to it. There's been a very disrupted lead into the season, very disrupted. So, look, I I still think where there's a there's a, there's a number of clubs there that are still, hit, that are still hit there their straps yet. I think there's still um, uh, there's the first few games of the season are basically uh, um, almost like training games, I guess, to try and find that form. So, look, I wouldn't be reading too much into it. I mean, I'm, I'm shocked. I'm shocked with the with the Pen Power lines being where 
where they are at the moment. But again, it's only two rounds in, so I wouldn't be reading too much mm. into it. You know what I mean? So yeah, let's just let's just calm our farms. But I think, but having said that about Calabar with the with their loss, I'm not sure what squad they played, whether they played a, a full team or not. But they wouldn't, but they wouldn't be very happy with that with that loss last night. And um, yeah, I think they'd be a bit more concerned about how their season's going to run. Um, out of out of out, out of all the clubs, based on that result, I think they'll be maybe a little bit concerned. Well, about how how, how the rest of the season is going to pan out for them. Just quickly looking at the uh, matches this weekend, uh, I guess the big ones actually there's no real standout fixture. Maybe Morton Bay United and Brisbane City, mm. Gold Coast Knights against Sunny Wander Sunny Coast Wanderers, potential power raw youth. Eh, maybe those ones. Anyway. Let's get on to the MPLW. We've got so much to get through tonight. Yes. Brayden. Yes. I was talking to uh, Rob Askew at the beginning of the season. He couldn't, he couldn't find a club that would take on his team in preseason. Couldn't get a game anywhere. Did he eventually get some going? Yeah, well, um, Football Queensland started a preseason tournament, which got canned, but then it got re-put on. So we've been the Sunshine Coast twice which has been awesome um, going up there. We played Morton Bay and we just played East on the weekend. So uh, we played boys midweek as well um, from, you know, our junior clubs here, uh, our junior team. So we've got enough games in our belt, I think, to uh, to have us ready for tomorrow. But, yeah, no one really wanted to play us. How's the squad looking this year? Yeah, good. Um, our A-League girls have just come back this week, so... Um, they'll play a role tomorrow night and then, yeah, it's just like everyone said, it's round one. So it's always tough round one and Olympic at home, it's going to be tough as well. Um, sure. I, saw, I saw a bit of a squad list come out. Did you lose Shay? Did yeah, Shay's Shay? gone to uh, Arpia. Arpia, okay. Oh, wow. Okay. There's a bit of speculation that she might have been picked up with the Central Coast Mariners uh, uh, squad that they're going to start next next season. But maybe that's yeah. A start, well, maybe look at the goals she scores. Of course, everyone be after her. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Up, yeah. Interesting. All right. So, uh, with the, this competition, Braden, who who do you think is going to be your, your biggest threats this year? Um. Yeah. All right. I think Cabalaba, Olympic, um, and East were probably our toughest preseason game that we played on the weekend. Uh, we're two 0 down against them. Uh, we ended up winning, but yeah, I think East. Yeah, they were good. Um, so yeah, I think those those guys might be the top four. We lost to Morton Bay in preseason, um, but yeah, we felt that you know Morton Bay, uh, East on the weekend were our, our toughest game, and Sunny Coast they're decent too. So um, we went up there twice, and playing up there is quite tough, and they were decent. So I think. I think it's going to be it's going to be hard, and I don't think you can really pick it because there's there's eight good teams, and it's going to be it's going to be an absolute battle. And whoever is the one to go down, yes, it, I think it's going to rely on squad depth. Who's going to go down? So with this competition, we're, we're down to eight teams. Are you playing each other twice, three times? Yeah, yeah, twice. So um, there's a buy in there. So we've got sixteen games. So like. Rob's been harping on about the last couple of weeks. If you have a poor start, you're going to be in trouble. So, yeah. So, I'll throw everyone else with it in this discussion, guys. It, yes, it's the best playing the best, but you're not playing all that often, are you? It's a shortened season. No. I think I think last season uh, with all the before they split, I think that I, I think they should have kept that to be honest. Um, so now you've got uh, two 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 competitions. That, with weird, with weird amount of t uh, clubs in each in each league. I mean, I I think that, that they probably could have done better there. To be honest, I mean, I mean, you can't. I mean, having eight teams in a top competition. I mean, that's just, yeah, that that's just not enough. What do you think, I Brad? To, I I disagree. Um, we were beating teams comfortably, and I think having a really good. good competition is what we need so players are going to the top clubs it's going to make a tougher competition it's going to improve other clubs it's going to improve players um, by having too many clubs in the top league each team's diluted so I think if you want a strong competition you need to have this many numbers up here and I think 
that's the way they've gone. And I think it's going to be a tough league. So you don't want somebody like us last year or, you know, Gold Coast the year before running out winners by a lot. Um, you want a tough game every week just to improve. You've got to see where you're at. If there's teams that, you know, aren't in the ballpark, what's, it just doesn't make sense. Sure. So I think they've done the right thing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> disagree but you agree I agree I disagree that's what we Look, Rob Askew he's probably been harping about this for the past few years he's always one of the best playing the best and if it's, it's six teams five teams four teams he doesn't care he just wants the best playing the best week in week out so I'm not going to argue against Rob all right Braden. so all right so there's you guys you said Easts Olympic you, you left out Gold Coast United. You don't. You don't think they're up there, South? You don't think they're gonna do it? I. That's just a gut feel for me. Um, it's like I said. It's gonna be tough. Um, I think South away is always probably the toughest trip. Um, on the synthetic, so um, I, I think that's yeah, it's gonna be a, a really tough one away. Um, they've just signed Rika Tano. They've signed Bella Habuda. Um. So they're two quality ins. Gold Coast um, haven't had much of a recruitment from other clubs, I don't think. Um, I know they've signed, re-signed uh, Ellie, their centre-back, and Deanna, their striker. Um, we've signed probably their best player each. Um, so I think she's a massive loss for them. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, and their pre-season results haven't been great. So I don't know. Liam, I'll throw to you now and get you to have a chat to uh, Braden about the FQPL with Ipswich West. Sorry, with Western Pride in that competition. Yeah, yeah, uh, they lost. They lost last week uh, against. Um, oh crap! Who was it? Uh, I forget who it was. Isn't that terrible? <laughs> yeah, no, uh, no, it's um, it was against Penn Power. Um, Penn Power, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, God, I think then. Um, yeah, look. Almost, almost a new squad for for the for the Pride girls. There's only I think there's only about three or four remaining from last season's run um, there. So, lost Pen Power too. I mean, towards towards the back end of last season, uh, they was they were starting to hit a hit a few goals um, uh, uh, with with the new coach there, it was Smith coach, and um, yeah, so they were starting to show show a bit. Towards the end, towards the end of last season, so they've just they've obviously uh, on the off season they've just recruited well, trained well, and now they've come out and uh, yeah they 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 played really well. So um, also too, I think um, uh, yeah Pride just uh, new coach there now with uh, with with Pi lost lost a few uh, players there that they're gone. Some some new ones have come in. So again, only only first first few rounds in. So so they'll be very very keen to find a bit of form and. I think Pen Power might, might be one to watch this season as well. Great to see. Uh, you right. Yeah, sorry, Brad. No, I, I, I was just going to say, I think, um, I, pretty, I reckon the two contenders there uh, are probably Mitchie and, and uh, Pen Power to go up. They're probably my two predictions there. You know that Steph Latham signed with Brisbane City? Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. I, they're, they're another one too. Um, they probably haven't got off to the start they like. Um, but yeah, they're well coached as well, John's good guy. And great to see Southwest Queensland Thunder getting an early win. Good to see them on the board. Yeah. <laughs> Not around the bottom. So congratulations, Thunder. Good stuff. All right. So um I just should also mention I saw Morton Bay United in the play in the preseason. I thought they were excellent. they I expect them to, to have a really good year too. Yeah. All right, let's start. Uh, Duck back over to the men's and have a chat about the FQPL. Liam, I'm going to throw yep. this over to you, mate. <laughs> well, um, yeah, it's been a it's been a bit of a mixed a bit of a mixed start to, to the season. Again, um, I part back to disrupted starts. There's been a there's quite a there's a there's a bit of a shock there with uh, with um, with uh, Mr. Panisi's uh, club down there in, in last in last spot there three. They haven't won any haven't won any games yet, but look. They've been unfortunate. I think the last, I think the last game they that that they played um, against Strikers, you know, they were two 0 ahead at half time and well, two one or something at half time, and um, you know, so look, Dan will have them firing very very soon. Uh, I know I 
talking to him about the Knights in the first game of the season versus Knights. They had a very they had a, a squad there that was that, that was decimated with injury, and 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 so they had a number of their um their, their first starters out. So they had a pretty young squad start against Knights. So um, yeah. Uh, what else have we got there? I mean, yeah, strikers. I mean, three from three. We, I mean, we we were we we said from the outset that that they, that that they were the team to go up. I think Thunder as well. I think they've had an excellent start to the season. Um, I think a couple of us kind of um, didn't quite write them off, but we had them kind of mid mid table. Um, Eagles. That 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 was your pick there to um to stay up there, uh, 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 Darren. So they they they've um they they're mid table. But again, we're only three rounds in, so I think you know. Again, there's 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 still some form trying to uh, trying to get through. Uh, I think Pride will be happy too that they had their their first win of the season. Um, so uh, that was against uh, Fire there. So that was a late winner there um, with uh, with Ryan Styler getting that late late goal there. But uh, couldn't get to that game. I had to work, so I had to I had to watch that one back. But I think yeah, I wonder what's going to happen with. With magpies, we we heard about what happened earlier in the week with magpies. Again, it's all allegations and and, and it's all kind of up in the air there. So, look, it's been a very very topsy turvy start to the season for the FQPL uh, one. But look, there's some good good uh, there's some good plays in this in this squad. Good clubs have uh, have recruited well. So, look, I would be keeping a very close eye on 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 this competition uh, this this season. Because uh, it's it's going to be a it's going to be a belter. I think we'll start. I reckon by about in the next probably oh, three or four rounds is when we're going to start seeing seeing a few gaps starting starting to open up. Perhaps DK last season it was all about survival. Are you, are your sights set a bit higher this season? Yeah, of course. Yeah, we we haven't had the best of starts, um, but yeah, the competition is tough. It really is tough. It's um. Yeah, again, you you look at where Michi are. You know, I didn't expect that either. You know, and I, right. I watched them play Redlands, and it was, yeah, it just I didn't didn't expect that sort of thing. And I think that just shows you that where the, where the quality is with all the the teams that have recruited. That if you have an off off day, that you get punished. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I go back to our last game. Obviously, I had to watch it at home, and it was heartbreaking for me because. We had literally the, the ball for pretty much the majority of the game and we knew that it was going to be a counter-attacking game and you can, if you don't stay switched on and you don't do your jobs and, and you, you'll, you'll concede goals. And, you know, we've got one of the best keepers in the league and, you know, there's nothing he can do with some of those things. Um, so that's what I mean. You've got to stay concentrated in every game. You have to play more than 90 minutes or yeah. you're going to lose. And points are a massive you know, a one point there against Pride for us, I would have been very happy in the conditions, having a red card with, you know, half an hour to go and things like that. I, you know, I would have been very happy, which, you know, that just shows you how much I think the points are very, very important in each game. So, yeah, the boys were, were not, uh, didn't get a very good uh, reception when I came back to training on the Tuesday. So I can tell you that. <laughs> yeah, I, think I, 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 I think it just... I think it just shows how close the competition is going to be because I don't think I've seen any mm. any blowouts yet, except for I think I think the strikers, uh, Magpies game, the, the the first game that I think that was that, the very first game. I think yeah, it was the very first I game. Think I, think, thing, I think that was a yeah. bit of a blowout. Yeah, but I think and if you look been, at the goals, yes. Like, did you? I mean, because I watched and we had to play them next, obviously Magpies, and yeah. I was like, we're going into Magpies, going they keep like I know Ethan Reed and. I was like, the goals that they can see were some were terrible. And we go and play him and he has a man of the match performance, saves two point blank yeah. shots. And it's like two completely different teams. So it just shows you that you have an off game. Yeah, they'll you, yeah. You get destroyed. Yeah. And I don't I think, think, again, Mitchelton, I, I, Redlands, like 4 0. Like that's that day for, for me. And I'm sure Dan was the same. It's yeah. you don't expect going into the game to lose 4 0. Like, no, you know, that's that's. You know, with the players Especially that they have was, and some of the I think it was nearly all at half time, wasn't it? That that game. Yeah, and it, yeah, and it was, just yeah. went bang. Yeah. So, but yeah, again, you know, you, you go to sleep, and you know, and I think that's the big thing with this league, and it's going to be like that. I think if you're yeah. off, it's, it's um, exactly. yeah, teams teams have the the, the ability to punish you, and uh, it's going to be very wary. All right, let's move on now to the FQPL two, Kirk. I'm going to bring you back in here. Your side's top of the table, mate. What an easy competition. 
All right, how do you be humble about this? No, it is. <laughs> you don't. You don't. Oh, Lord, take, Lord. It. Uh, take it now. <laughs> yeah. It's not a surprise that this league wasn't going to be as highly as we thought the Gold Coast Premier League. Like the Gold Coast Premier League to this league is, we, as most Gold Coast teams would think, is high. All right, so to come in there, and it's proved that with us and Albany Creek both coming in, I mean, as the boys are saying, it's only three games, plenty more games to go to suss things out. But you can already see a bit of a pattern emerging that's going to be probably those two teams, us and Albany, will be up there um, and the rest fighting for third or fourth. But um, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's an unusual one in terms of we don't really know much about each side. Obviously, getting to watch the live streams the week before, we get to see how they set up. But a lot of teams, um, it's all sort of new to us, so we can't predict how they have been in the past. We can only sort of play our own game, and and that has sort of worked so far. Um, you know, we went up the south, tore them apart. Um, I think the first game was at Coomera, which we know quite well. They're a young side. I think that's what we're finding too. A lot of teams are quite young. You know, we've built a side that's a QPL one side, so we our ambition is to get straight out of there um, and compete with the likes of uh, Sunshine Coast Fire and and that. So it's it's going to be it's going to be an unusual league in terms of is it just going to be the top two and then the rest are just gone, you know, or is it going to be these teams are going to stand up and start giving us a contest because at the moment that's Tom. Yeah. We we. We played you in preseason, and I remember saying to Alex, "I said it's you're gonna you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna enjoy FQPL too." Because I mean, like Wolves, Souths, teams that were in our league before and then got dropped down, mm. and and playing against you guys, just the experience, just the fact of you're playing against a men's team. Like they were, they were you know Lassam and and you know Teddy and you had some players in there that, that can play FQPL uncomfortably, and you know. We even, you know, the, the the result with us was just it, just, it was a men's side. And it was, we know that you're going to be playing against a lot younger, uh, inexperienced players. And, you know, yeah. we, we were very confident. Tell Alex that you were going to enjoy that league in the sense of, I felt it was going to be very comfortable, personally. Yeah, I mean, it's enjoyable that you've had that you get the win. It's not enjoyable that it's not a contest. <laughs> but, but like you said, it's, I think, I won't say the team, but we played a team and there's, there's only three teams that played, and one of the players walked off and said, "How can we compete with an NPL side? It's just, it's just not going to happen." So that was a that was a great confidence booster for us to hear that. But then we go against Pen Power, and then and, and we can't compete against them when it comes to the cup. So you know, it's, it's a double edged sword sometimes. But um, I think we have to enjoy the fact that we enjoy the ride this year, you know, because it's going to set us up for travelling in, into Brisbane, you know for these teams, for these leagues going. I mean, the pyramid now, it's all set in stone, isn't it? So over the next 10 years, you might not play any of these local sides that we have after ever again or, you know, five to 10 years. Who knows? It's, it's interesting. And this weekend, you're uh, going to Sanford Parklands to take on the Rangers. Yeah, I think I watched that in the live stream. But so... Uh, no, <laughs> <laughs> I think the boys went there in pre-season... This year and the year before we went as well. Um, they got a nice setup up there. Uh, we've watched them. I, I watched them personally in the live stream against Coomer on the weekend. Um, I think that will be an interesting first 20 minutes and then it should be all right after that, to be fair. Um, so, yeah, I won't say much. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's hard. It's hard to be, yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, who knows? Who knows what happens when you go to places like this? Let's be fair. Who knows? Yeah. I was there on the weekend, actually, and the first thing that hits, I mean, fantastic facilities, mm. but the first thing that, that hits you is the fresh air. Fresh air. It is so <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> but, yes, great facility. And, um, yeah. And, and one thing from our club's perspective that we quite like going to, I mean, our place, if you've been to our place, which I'm, I'm not sure you've been to our place yet, have you? No, you, you went not to, yet. Not yet. No. I mean, we have a rope up and we, we have one fence. Uh, we actually got <laughs> these the all these big clubs have. Plus, it's something new to go to all these great venues and that. And that's mm. you know, as we go to we say this where we have to be, you know, for what we have at the club in terms of facility wise, you know. So we we pick things like that off and go right. Let's move ourselves upwards. Yeah, exactly, exactly. All right. While we've got you here, Kirk, let's uh, have a quick chat about the uh, the Gold Coast League that, that kicked off on the it was last weekend, wasn't it? So, 
you're not in that competition anymore, which but you you should be very familiar with all the teams. Who do you fancy this year? Uh, at the start of the season, I think Palm Beach put their name up. I mean, they stayed at the cup. They had all intention to get promoted. Um, they had a tough, uh, tough loss against Rabina at home, the first game of the season. I don't think they were expecting that. Uh, Rabina have recruited really well, so they've got ambitions to go a lot higher too. They've got all their kids up in the FQTL2 Development League, I think, so they've got ambitions as a club. Uh, I think you look at it there, Southport, Kingscliff, uh, and I'm gonna and obviously Broadbeach. Broadbeach have recruited really well. So Broadbeach obviously were a powerhouse on, on the coast for a long, long time. They went a bit backwards with their playing roster um, the last couple of years, but they've sort of got themselves right up there. So they're they I think they're gonna go quite well. Um, but I'd say Palm Beach, Rabina, Broadie, and then even clubs like Bay, who obviously just just got beat last night against uh, Gold Coast Knight, but put up a good con- a contest from what I'm hearing. Musgrave as well, they've recruited well. So all around those four, five, six mark, Kingscliff again, you know, that would be hard for them to sort of get in there and mix it around. But I think your top team is Palm Beach and Rabina with Broad Beach as my dark horse to win the league. You didn't mention Southport there, mate. Uh, uh, Southport, they've lost a few. I mean, I watched them last night on the live stream again for a bit. I think they played Western Pride in the Cup. Uh, they got done, but they've lost a few of their top strikers. I think Morgan Thorne has gone up to East. They've also lost Fernan- uh, Fernando Nor, I think, was playing for Western Prize, scored against them, actually. So they've lost a few key of cube key players, especially goal scorers. But Southport are a hard team to play. I mean, they've done us last year in the semi-final and grand final winners last year. So they'll be up in the top four. I, will they break the top three? Will they get promoted? I don't think so. So a lot of my friends there might annoyed that I said that, but at the end of the day, is, you know, I just think I think what Palm Beach want to do, and let's be fair, Palm Beach are a massive club on the coast, and they have been a big club in, in, in Queensland for a long time, so they want to get back up to this pyramid as soon as possible, so it'd be interesting to see if they can. They've been there and about for the, for the past couple of years, haven't they? So it'll be interesting to see if they can just get over that hump and, uh, and go on with it. They have, mate. Oh, we're not there this year, so they've always been bridesmaids to us. I love it. I love it. All right, DK, I'm going to throw back to you. We were going to do a, a Sunshine Coast uh, League preview as well tonight, but there, there's still there's nothing. Competition. <laughs> there's still yeah, three but, weeks. Yeah. Three weeks. Yeah, three, four weeks. Yeah, end of the month. It's when they start. So, yeah. Age, the, the only thing you've got really is the FFA Cup, which is Murchidor and NYU who play. And Murchidor went through and we played NYU last night and they're out now. So that's that's all that's been happening besides even the pre-season cup games is, you know, like the Sunshine Coast Cup. I haven't seen any results really. And they've got another round next week, but uh, this week. But yeah, there's not really much been going on there, unfortunately. So we'll get you to do some long-term predictions, mate. Who do you, who do you fancy? Murchidor. I mean, they're pretty much the Sunshine Coast, Wanderers and Budrum and all that put with mixed with Murchidor all together. They've got my Denver Crickmore as a goalkeeper, so ex-FQPL um, keeper for Wanderers when they got promoted and was at Moreton Bay. Um, you know, Nick Arden's there now. Scarfs are there. Um, ben Lynch from me. So from the fire, he, he's gone back to Murchidor. Um, but they, they, have a, they have a great team. They've, they've, I think I looked at their bench uh, for the FFA Cup game against St. George Willowong and they had Jed Malin, who's been a top goal scorer in the Sunny Coast Premier League. They had um, Jake Tal, who was at NYU last year, who won it. Um, you know, they had a bench that was stacked. <laughs> so for the Sunny Coast League, it's, I think it's them. Um, the only other one that I think is, is always Kawana. I mean... They're they're always a, a tough team to beat. They're um they'll they'll just make finals and then they'll turn it on for the final. <laughs> that's literally what they do every year. But and then NYU and um and Calandra. That's I, honestly I don't see anyone else other than those those four. Right. But okay. I, I think Murchidor clear winners personally. Interesting. And they haven't won for a while, have they? No, obviously they. The last time they won it was when then all the players left and went to Wanderers and at the inception of the Wanderers. So, yeah, so literally they won it. And then literally, I think it, that's when the, the Sunshine Coast Wanderers were formed and they had pretty much majority of the, the Merchador boys. 
um, uh, they all went there and yeah. I, oh, I, I keep forgetting Noosa, don't I? I haven't yeah. seen much of Noosa, but they um yeah shit I, I did forget that. That's that's my bad. Yeah, well um I still think Marichador though. I still think Marichador win it, but Noosa yeah. Oh, they're always tough, aren't they? I, I can't say any bad about that. They beat me every every time I was in the local comp, so I can't <laughs> say that they won't be out there. Um, but yeah, they'll 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 go close. They'll be and they'll I be the next team actually. I saw that Kevin Ahern Evans has has taken on. Okay, head of he's juniors. at the Wanderers. At the, the Wanderers, yeah, junior di- technical director, I think, and he's also the under 18s coach. That, that's a strange appointment, isn't it? You thought he'd have ta- gone back to a senior side. Uh, well, yes and no. Like, I, I think there's a long-term play at work, possibly. Um, I know that he, he look, I know he, when he le- obviously came off the all the senior stuff, he was more wanting to spend more time with the family um, and, you know, going back to, you know, the Noosa stuff and just really sort of, I think, honing in more on the family side of things. But I know, like, I mean... I think it's like anything, a person like that is very successful at the senior area and, and obviously it's only a matter of time before someone uh, offers him something that is actually what he wants. Um, you know, he, I think he has the ability to, to sit back and be a bit picky now. I think he's done quite well. His reputation's quite good. I think he could take most jobs. Um, I think it just depends on which one he wants. Um, but, yeah, it'd be interesting to have that conversation with him to see what he's thinking. Yeah, I might have to track him down and get him on the show in a few weeks' time. I know. I, I saw him down at uh, at our game. He was watching. So I uh, got a nice message from him. So, it's you know, he's, he's keeping his eye on everything. He's he's always been like that, always keeps his eye on everything that's going around the sunny coast. So it's good to see he's still around. Good to see. Good to see. Braden, are you still there, mate? I am. Just uh, just listening and enjoying the uh, the men's side. It's interesting. <laughs> I'm going to come back to you now, mate. We're going to talk uh, FQPL2, which is the um, the third tier. I guess there are some Gold Coast teams in there as well. Um, UQ are currently top of the ladder, along with Ipswich Knights. Uh, you got any knowledge of this competition? Um, a little bit. Um, I speak to the Ipswich Knights president a fair bit, um, being my old club. Um, Saw Tringa play on the weekend. They played the Lakes, I think. Um, they, I think they're going to be the ones to beat, actually. I think Tringa are. Got some good players there. And um, some old MPL players um, that, that probably just don't want the commitment in MPL anymore. So they've gone down to train twice a week, which is good. You wouldn't be happen to be talking about Liz Doherty at all, would you, Braden? Oh, yeah, she runs around a little bit there. Um, <laughs> so, but yeah, no, it's good to watch them play, actually. It's it's good to uh, go out and watch and just have a beer, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. All right, so just having a look at that uh, that competition. Um, it's going to be interesting. I still, want, I still want Ipswich Knights to win it, though, because that's my club. I still right. want them to win it. Broadbeach United, of course, won this league last season. They're currently sitting in seventh place with a, a win and a loss. So, surprise, they, they went through undefeated last season. So, it's surprised that they, uh, given the strength of their the squad, that they've lost a game so early. Uh, UQ up there, Taringa up there, and Rabina. Rabina have got an excellent squad as well. So, it's the two coast teams that I think are going to be making up the, the shape of the top four. If, if you include Taringa and um, surprised to see Albany Creek getting off to a good start as well, because then they're promoted to this competition as well. I think it's good. Um, I like teams that are a little bit underdog coming up and, and doing well against these other teams. Um, I think it's interesting. It's good. I like it. Good stuff. Mate, um, with your goalkeeper coaching, are there, who, who have you got this season at the club at Lions? Um, so we've got Coco and Ali Chapel. So Coco's injured at the moment. So Miss, Melissa Barbieri actually got sent off um, in the semi-final for Melbourne City, I think it was, or, or one of yep. the qualifying games. Um, and Coco was an injury replacement down there um, earlier in the year for the other goalkeeper. So they flew Coco down there for the semi-final to, uh, to be on the bench. And 
unfortunately broke her thumb in the warm up. So yeah, it was so unlucky. So unlucky, hey. Um, That's so unlucky. So, so we've got um, Ali Chapel as well. So we're really lucky. We've got two good goalkeepers, and we got um, a really, really good young fifteen-year-old who's who's coming through the ranks. So um, it's uh, it's going to be a big ask if uh, the young fifteen-year-old has to go on for a girl, but um, she's capable, and we're just really lucky that we've got exceptional goalkeepers here yeah it must be a pleasure to work with hey and you've, you've worked with some good ones in your time yeah it's good um and and on the men's side jason keaton's here so learning off him and you know speaking with him for advice etc um it's yeah it's great excellent just need you to uh just talk a little bit more after get up the next competition ladder up um there we go. We might just move on now to the FQPL three, which is of course the Brisbane competition. Just trying to get that up and running. I saw the the Lakes and Pine Hills last Friday night. Excellent game. It was a one nil win to the Lakes. These two teams are going to be fighting out this competition. Um, I say Pine Hills, Pine Hills and the Lakes. I hope that's what I said because that's who I saw. It's a great game. Those two teams, excellent, really good. Um, it's going to be a great competition with those guys. I rate them just that little bit higher above Bayside. Oh, that Bayside will certainly give them a run for their money. That's going to be a good competition. Liam, have you uh, taken any notice of this league? Uh, I just want to just make note of Western Spirit. I mean, at, um, because, you know, being out this way, being local. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I know a lot of clubs, especially where we're hit with the, with the floods, but Spirit, you know, we're especially you know, hit as well and, then they had vandal, uh, vandalism to, to the club and that uh, I think during uh, earlier in the week. So they've so they're uh, they're on the on the back on the back foot especially. So you know I wish them all the luck this season. Um, you know they've they've been through a, a real rough patch you know on and off the off the pitch the last couple of seasons and uh, you know coaches going and players and all that. So you know, being being and switch local, you know. I like to see Goodner do well this season, and I think I, I can see here they've they uh, played three one one lost two. So look, it doesn't look like the best start, but um, yeah, wish them all the best. Good stuff. All right, well I can't find that league, so we might wrap up the show. Thank <laughs> God. So oh, I've, I've 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 got it here on the from the Football Queensland one. Um, the uh, the ladder is uh, yeah. So we got. Some, St. George and Top, Pine Hills, Bayside, Toowong, the Lakes, Newmarket, Acacia Ridge, and UQFC's rounding them up down the bottom there in 12th. St. George, yes, they're a team that uh, will be contending as well. How yes. remiss of me to leave them out. All right, mm. guys, move on. Yeah, go for it. No, <laughs> then you left them out. <laughs> 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 Look, I know a little about a lot. A little about a lot. That's why I get you guys on because you know a lot about a little. <laughs> all right. So, uh, thank you for your time this evening, gentlemen. It's been great to have you all with us and uh, and catch up. See you guys for the first time this year. Good luck uh, with the rest of the season. I'm sure you'll all do wonderfully well. Thanks, all man. right. So, this has been the Cheers, village. Guys. SEQFC preview show. Great to be back and uh, hopefully, hopefully we'll be back next week and the week after and the week after that. We can get back to regular shenanigans. All right, we'll see you then.